Welcome back to the weekly market review for the week ending August 16th, 2024. And we will take a look at all of the market action this week. Thanks for tuning in. If uh, you have not already, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And you can also find analysis that I post on Twitter at Mr. J. Thomason. And if you're interested, you can find my weekly newsletter at BeFinanciallyFree.Substack.com. Um, and the links to both of those are in the description of the video below. Um, so here we're looking at a five-day view. Um, so this is what happened this week in the S&P 500. Um, and as you can see, it goes from the bottom left of the screen to the top right. Market was up all week. Every single day uh, was a, uh, well, maybe not every single day was a positive day. Um, I think Monday was down slightly, uh, and then ever since then it was just up, up, up. Um, and this week was a really good uh, kind of a test for how the market would respond to uh, different high-impact news events that it had been looking forward to. And it's it's a really good way to to kind of see how market psychology plays a role in here. Uh, so I just want to start here. Um, kind of with an observation that I had. Um, so on Monday, we uh, kind of just chopped sideways throughout the day because everybody has been anticipating the uh, PPI, which was Tuesday, and the CPI, which was on Wednesday, uh, and then as well as retail sales uh, yesterday, Thursday, um, as well as the jobless claims and a couple other indicators. Um, and then today we had uh, some housing data, but uh, I didn't think it was as high of an, an impact as some people did. Um, so the market kind of went sideways from the open. I mean, if, if you look at the futures, it looks, you know, a, it looks a little bit different uh, because it does include Sunday's price action. So you can see it was kind of up, uh, but really choppy. So let me go back to the non-futures uh, for just a minute. Um, so uh, kind of chopped sideways, just kind of waiting to pick a direction. One of those kinds of things that you like if you weren't already in a position and and or hedged, uh, you just you don't want to go into this. It's, it's a trader's market. You can see uh, we opened and went down to the lows and then went up to the highs in the same day uh, and then just kind of bounced in between that. It was basically a sideways consolidation all day uh, and then going into uh, Tuesday we got the PPI which was soft uh, dovish favorable to the market uh, the market has been wanting to see uh, good inflation data because the Federal Reserve uh, speakers Powell especially have been saying that the data has been good but they've wanted to keep getting good data and so on that data uh, you know futures were up uh, they popped on that data and um, and just took off and the market does this sometimes uh, you know when uh, the, the market will sometimes get a news uh, a high impact news event and pop like it did here and then people watch to see what happens you have a lot of people who chase the price uh, right on the pop so they'll buy right at the open so a lot of times not all the time but a lot of times you'll see uh, a green candle the first you know this is a five minute chart um, you'll see the first five minutes uh, will be green because people usually are buying into the open. A lot of uh, retail investors will buy in at the open. Um, and then what happens sometimes is uh, that will pop for a little bit and then get sold on the open. Uh, and usually uh, you, your bears will try to sell that initial pop. Uh, and then people who did not chase the open uh, are going to be sitting there waiting for uh, the price to come off before they actually buy and there's a couple of different things that could happen and um, and what I thought uh, or what I wondered um, when, when the whenever price pops like that and gaps open or gaps up at the open then my first thought is are we gonna make a lower low than the open uh, so the open here was at 53.77 approximately um, yeah, the, uh, 5376, I'm sorry, but almost 5377. Um, and what I was watching for is, will the market come back down 
uh, below that opening price. And traders will uh, will look for that because uh, nobody wants to, well, a lot of people just psychologically, they don't want to buy higher. So they tell themselves they're going to wait for it to come back. So what they're looking for is the price to come back below that open because they'll feel like, okay, like I'm able to make up some ground. But what often happens after these pop-ups is the price won't come back to where you want it to and it'll actually just take off and never look back. And that's pretty much what happened all throughout. The, the price other than kind of like one pullback, kind of a sideways for a while and then a pop um, towards the end of the day. Um, so really only two occasions gave you an opportunity to try to get in. But a lot of people when they wait uh, when they wait to get in, I mean, if you didn't get in by, you know, almost, uh, let's see, what is that, 10 o'clock? So one, by 1 o'clock Eastern time, you missed the move. You basically missed the entire move except for the, you know, small pop at the very end. Um, and so that's typically what happens. The market leaves people behind and it keeps grinding up higher, higher, higher. And people who want to get in the market because they're missing out, they, they just buy. They, they eventually get to the point where they get tired of being behind the market so they buy and that's where it goes sideways so then uh and then people are uh people have recency bias so then what happens on um on wednesday we got uh cpi data that was dovish uh, some people will say there was a little bit of hawkishness because the uh, the, the housing uh, inflation data, the owner's equivalent rent, I think it was the owner's equivalent rent, and the super core uh, CPI, which takes out the housing, uh, was actually higher. Um, so, um, uh, so there are some people who say, oh, there was some hawkish data, but um, it was dovish. And, in the, uh, and I should actually go to the futures so you can actually see this. Uh, so I'm going to go to Wednesday. Um, so on Wednesday... On that day when the CPI got released it popped up and down and back up and back down and then kind of settled the, the candle was lower which would make a lot of people who are watching that who trade futures or try to trade pre-market think that oh the price is gonna go down so they might short but then the next five-minute candle went back up and took it back up towards the highs of the overnight session uh, of the pre-market session and then by the time uh, the market opened, it was it had been up, uh, but then was not up at the same. It hadn't gotten past the same highs from the uh, from the spike candle. And so, unlike the previous day, uh, when the market opened, it hadn't it, it gapped up, but it hadn't gapped up a whole lot. And despite the fact that it was dovish data, um, when the market opened, it got sold immediately. So that's one of those situations. Again, let me go back to my SPX chart. Uh, that's a situation where a lot of traders will watch to see if price comes back off the gap, and it did. So you'll see a pop or, or a stabilization of price as people try to take their long positions. But then the problem is that, um, and, and I actually tweeted this. I don't have the tweet uh, queued up, but... Um, I tweeted this. I said, I said, because of yesterday on dovish data, people are going to look to buy at the first available opportunity because they think the market's going to just take off and race to the upside. And I said, so the most likely thing that's going to happen is the market is going to be really frustrating and it's going to trade down and up. And sure enough, when it came down, people bought, but it didn't stop going down. And it made the low of the day in the first, uh, basically the first hour of the day but then after that you see people on this candle uh, I don't know if you could tell uh, maybe I'll zoom it in a little bit um, but on this candle right here you can see the the price action shows you that people uh, started to get a little bit nervous about their position um, and so they actually sold it uh, and you actually see the selling uh, to the bottom but then right after that the market rockets back up and basically in an hour and a half, the market is at its high of the day. Okay, so then that's where people are like, okay, like maybe some people bought this dip here. Maybe some people got in on the way. It gets up here. People think, okay, the market's going to keep doing, market's going to do what it did on PPI day. 
Well, not so fast. So the market comes back off and goes basically to unchanged on the day. So then people who think, oh, I've seen this kind of a thing before. Uh, it's sold down, popped, and then it's failing on that pop. So I'm going to short it again. And then what does it do? It goes sideways. So then you get people who start thinking, okay, well, wherever it goes after this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it. Well, okay, but then it... Uh, it, it just went sideways the literal rest of the day. It, it faked you to the downside, to the upside, to the downside, back to the upside. All right, so that was, again, the frustrating day. It just kind of chopped sideways. It did finish up, but it chopped sideways. Okay, so then retail sales data on Thursday. What does the market do? And I tweeted about this. I said either the market's going to do a, what it did on PPI day, or it's going to be frustrating like CPI day, or it's going to sell off and not give you an opportunity to get out or to try to short at a good spot. And then as soon as the market popped up, it kind of came off a little bit and then it just went off to the races again. So it was basically just like the, uh, just like the PPI day, almost exactly the same to the letter. I mean, almost the same price movement. Um, and then of course we have today, uh, we had a little bit of data, not a whole lot. Uh, market looked for direction kind of, uh, popped, fell, went up higher, and then meandered the rest of the day. And as you can see from the right side of the screen, you know, not not a whole lot. So uh, this was a this was this is a fun market this week because uh, if you're looking at it from a psychological standpoint, all of this made sense. You had investors and traders waiting on high freak, or waiting on high impact data, news data, news events trying to take a position, trying to pick the direction and basing off of, you know, recency uh, bias, trying to do, trying to say, oh, the market's going to do what it did yesterday. Uh, you could just see that back and forth, right? Because on Monday sold down, Tuesday, everyone's waiting for that, but it takes off. Wednesday, everyone thinks it's going to do what it did Tuesday on the data. It chops sideways. Uh, Thursday, we get the data and, you know, People don't buy it, so it takes off. And then Friday, everyone's like, oh, it's going to do what it did yesterday. Nope, it just goes sideways or sort of sideways. So it's a really good case study. So now if we take a look at kind of the bigger picture, um, here's where we're at. Um, I'm actually watching, um, uh, let me see. I'm actually watching uh, kind of this level right here uh, because I want to see price make uh, a higher high and close above that level because um, otherwise uh, it's in I mean uh, as great as the price action has been uh, I mean there, people have been spending the last couple of days trying to debate about what this sell down came from trying to figure out uh, if it was just the carry trade if it was recession fear uh, whatever it was people trying to find that one cause but for me the way I see this is the degree of upside that we've had in the last 11 trading days, almost 8% on the S&P from the lows uh, from Monday, August 5th. Um, that's the kind of price action that you can see uh, in corrections or in bear markets. And I'm not saying that it is one of those things because, you know, we, if any of you remember my uh, videos, it was the same kind of thing I talked about back here uh, from 2023 uh, into Q4 of 2023, where you had price just ripped to the upside, ripped everyone a new one. Uh, so uh, it doesn't have to be just a dead cat bounce. Uh, but then also, you know, if you go back to the 2022 bear market, uh, if you think about like uh, this, we had this sell down, and of course the market, you know, was down a lot deeper. Uh, it was down, you know, 13% uh, at the time. Uh, but from that low in 15, you know, 11 trading days, 15 calendar days, it went up over 10%. Uh, and then of course it made lower lows. And from that high, if you go from the closing high there, it got to within three and a half percent of its all time high. So, you know, where are we at now? Uh, from our closing high, we are about 2%. So um, not sure what that's going to mean. Uh, I don't know if it means that, you know, we've hit the right threshold uh, to keep going higher. But I'm watching the horizontal level there because 
uh, we've already beaten, uh, we've already surpassed uh, a, a key level of importance that I was watching, uh, which was, it, de it depended on how you looked at it. You could look at this level, we got past it, uh, or this level, we gapped up above it. Um, and so uh, some people might say, oh, you know, gaps get filled. Well, I mean, in theory, the gaps to the ups, or the gaps on the, the uh, as we sold off are starting to get filled now. Uh, so there's that. Um, and, you know, like it or not, fair or not, gaps uh, to the upside when, when it price gaps up, those don't always, th those actually much more rarely get filled. So just be aware. Um, so we have cleared uh, trend line resistance um, and we have cleared the moving averages. So if I put on the moving averages here, uh, we are back above you know, all of the major moving averages and the 50 is starting, or the 20 and the 50 are curling back up. So that's bullish for, uh, for the stock market. Um, and, and I think it's entirely possible that at this point, people just got too bearish on this. People, I mean, people were talking about the yen carry trade taking us down to the mid to low 4,000 level on um, S&P 500. Uh, people were talking about credit events. People are, I mean, all kinds of things. We just got, people just got really bearish. And, and you know, like in fairness, like one of the things I've been saying is I think, I've been saying since I think what, April or May, that it's possible a recession is starting. Um, but uh, that's something I'm going to dive into in more depth as kind of updating my view for my newsletter. So if you're interested, you'll want to uh, check that out. Um, so anyway, uh, risk looks decent, um, although uh, I, I wouldn't, if you're not already in the market, uh, what I would do is I would wait to see how price reacts at this level. Um, and once you get back up, if we get back up to all time highs, uh, if we break above all time highs, then you know, you want to be long the market. You don't want to, you don't like, you don't want to short all time highs. And, um, you know, at, at some point price does come, does reverse, but the odds, I mean, where, where would you have gotten short and been successful, at, you know, except for on a few occasions over the last, you know, uh, 10, 11 months, um, not a lot of places. So, um, so anyway, uh, most people are afraid when price is at all time highs, most people are afraid. That's why the price can just keep grinding to the upside. So um, I feel like equity risk seems pretty good right now, but uh, there's obviously a lot more uh, that we can look at. And boy, oh boy, it seems like we've come a long way since that VIX spike. I mean, just melting, melting down ever since, except for, you know, on Wednesday the 7th just melting down. We're, I mean, we're back below 15. It's, it's crazy. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, stuff out there about how this is the fastest by far that a VIX spike that went over 30 uh, came down and back, got back below what I think it was below 20 or something like that. It's the fastest that's ever happened. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other things. We got the dollar here. Uh, which is closing on uh, new lows. It's uh, closing at its lowest level since, let's see, back in January of this year. So we're almost at unchanged on the year. So a lot of the dollar gains have gone away. So I can get rid of that trend line. Uh, as long as the dollar, I, I, would, I would say to a degree, as long as the dollar keeps going down, it's probably net positive for risk because it's going to be net positive for liquidity. So that's going to be something to, to watch and pay attention to um, as price gets uh, to these levels. Um, oops, uh, sorry. Um, and then we've got the 10 year, uh, which is uh, had previously made uh, lows below 3.8%. Now at 3.88%, uh, basically unchanged on the year now. So uh, yields in dollar moving the similar direction. Um, so, uh, and again, yields coming off kind of just depends. Um, if we look at the uh, tens twos curve, uh, we're higher uh, than we have been for most of this year, but uh, definitely back down below kind of where some of that spiking was happening. 10 year, three month is still well inverted. Uh, and I've done a lot of analysis talking about this. Um, this is the if you if you're looking for a recession, this one has to go uh, 
this one has to steepen and it has to steepen really quick. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, tens two steepened, but then the problem uh, that we have with that is if you look back at the inversion on the tens twos uh, back before March 2020, which by the way, I mean, this recession was largely caused by the global lockdown. So, and who knows if it would have happened otherwise, but it inverted in August and it was months later and it was much more steepened before it uh, went negative. And if you want to even go back to uh, the, uh, let me put the line chart on. If you even want to go back to the uh, financial crisis, I mean, we uh, inverted, disinverted in 2006, inverted, disinverted in, you know, June, May, June 2007. And the NBER didn't say, didn't even call recession until 2008 and they backdated it to December and so when we got to December the tens twos was flattened or was uh you know steepened and it was 95 basis points so it's not it's not the tens twos necessarily like if you're looking for a recession uh then the big tell will be 10 year three month that's why you should be watching that um so that's what's kind of going on there uh, a couple other things. Gold went up 50 bucks today. It's now at a closing all-time high. And I tweeted about this. I, I want, believe me, like some of you guys, if you follow me on Twitter, you know uh, I've said this recently. Like I want to be uh, bullish gold, but I just, every time gold has a, a strong move, and granted, it's at all-time highs now above 2,500, but every time it has a strong move, everyone comes out of the woodwork and says, Oh, it's, you know, it's going to 3,000, it's going to 10,000, and the same thing on silver. But the thing is, you know, silver is lagging. And I think that that's, you know, to, if, uh, if you're in a metals bull market, uh, silver should outperform. It doesn't always, but it, it's more likely that silver outperforms. And silver's not outperforming. So, I don't really like the price action there in the metals. Um, and then uh, crude oil, uh, this is a little bit misleading because we had the uh, contract switch today. So if you do the contract adjust, down almost 2%. Um, and I just, this, I haven't really been talking about energy. Uh, you know, I talked, I, I screamed about energy at multiple different points. Um, and then I've been largely quiet and for most of this year. and price action is basically sideways much of the year with you know ups and downs but um you know so not really a, a whole lot you can say there and people are screaming about you know supply and positioning and all that kind of stuff my take on this is that the positioning isn't as off sides as people are saying although it is moving towards more like short um so i haven't uh, updated and looked at my uh positioning data on the futures yet so I can't really say, so that's going to be something I definitely analyze more uh, this weekend for the um, for the newsletter. Um, I do want to point out breadth has gotten a lot better. Uh, the stocks above their 50-day moving average in the S&P 500, we've been kind of since April fighting the 50 line with a couple of spikes above and a couple of periods below. Uh, but we're pretty strongly up here now and, uh, you know, in positive territory and for me positive territory is above 50 and we've been above 50 uh, for a while on the stocks above their 200 day moving average so to me this is supportive of further market upside uh, definitely in my newsletter didn't call it right the last couple of weeks in terms of kind of what my gut feel was over the next week but you know a week like this it's largely data dependent uh, and so didn't really get a lot, uh, or I'm sorry, there's not really a, a lot that I could have said that would have made sense. I mean, if CPI or PPI or retail sales goes a different direction, then the call is right, uh, but it wasn't. So got to take ownership for that. Um, one thing I've been watching, and I'll kind of wrap up on this point, is uh, that I've been watching the high beta to low beta ratio, uh, which is uh, right now in bearish tide. Uh, so that's a warning sign. Um, but on a more positive note, the junk uh, junk bond to treasury bond uh, ratio is is in bullish tide. Um, and it was under threat for a little bit. But this is why um, I don't feel like 
you know, a lot of the people who have been talking about possible credit events, credit blowouts and things like that, like, you know, this was, once this came back above, uh, I, I just was like, well, this is not, this is not really going to be anything. So there has to be some other issue that causes uh, distress or something in order to get this to turn. Uh, and in my opinion, like right now, we've got one out of two, uh, the high beta, low beta ratio in bearish tide. Um, we have to get, I mean, we, uh, it, if people want uh, to see downside, more sustained downside, bear market, credit event, like something like that, then the JNK slash SHY is going to be something to watch. And you're going to want to see this come down and stay down. Otherwise, um, it's a mixed signal and, uh, and it doesn't really mean a whole lot right now. Um, I will say... I think I talked about this SPY to XLU. I think I've talked about this at some point. Um, when this is bearish tied, and it currently is as a result of the price action in the last couple of weeks, um, the risk of downside, the risk of corrective events um, is a lot higher or it's high. Um, and in those corrective events, the probability of significant downside is also really high. So. Um, I'm not trying to say that we need to be worried, um, but I will say you could be cautiously bullish. Cautiously bullish is kind of the key idea here. So uh, I think that's the read on the market. Um, can't really uh, think of anything else to really talk about. Bond volatility spiked, but it's been coming off. Uh, credit spread spiked, but they are coming off as well. Um, so in my opinion, I don't, I don't see a lot that has I don't see a lot of hard evidence that you should be worried uh, about the market at this particular juncture. Um, and, you know, for all intents and purposes, I mean, a 10% correction typically happens every year. And if you want to go from the high, the intraday high to the intraday low on the futures, then you got 10.5%. So uh, maybe that's sufficient. Uh, if you go on SPY, then from top to bottom, it's 9.71. So not exactly 10%. Um, but uh, but I think that you know maybe you got exactly what what you needed uh, for the for a correction um, before going to all time highs again. Uh, nobody really knows. Uh, nobody has a crystal ball. Um, but again, my take, my gut feel right here as we uh, as we close this video is that equities look like they're good to go further to the upside. Uh, dollar probably actually let me take a look at a few things got a dollar cross uh, dollar looks like it still has room for downside over the next um, over the next week or so um, the 10 year so yields uh, look like they're gonna go down that means it's probably likely positive for bonds um, Gold still looking strong, although I'm not sure I like the idea that gold is outperforming um, over time in silver. I mean, today it wasn't an outperformer, but gold's at all-time highs and silver still struggling. I'm not sure I like that, but generally okay about gold. And then Bitcoin, which I didn't talk about in the video, but uh, it's kind of just meandering still. Uh, we're still in the window. That's what the white box is. Um, the window of the correction uh, and the period of time where um, price has in the past following the having made a new cycle high um, from its previous um, highs uh, ahead of the having. So uh, kind of neutral there, but um, uh, but I actually, uh, for disclosure, I actually have a, a, a trade position uh, which I opened on July 5th. Um, and the stop, the soft stop loss is at the low of that day, and we almost got it. If we had closed on August fifth, which was, it's kind of funny, that's exactly a month later. If we had closed below that level, I would have stopped out of the trade. But because we didn't, um, it's still open, so that's in profit because um, I took that trade at about fifty five four hundred. So, um, so that's in profit, just barely, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like I have a long-term position, so I'm okay with price meandering. Uh, and it sure looks ugly right now, but I mean, honestly, like you could go back to other times in Bitcoin's price history and say that that looked ugly. Like if you look over here in 2020, that looked ugly. 
uh, this first correction looked really ugly. I mean, the price action uh, distrib the distribution in 2021 looked super ugly and we still were able to go make uh, new highs. You want to go back to earlier cycles. How many different times did the price action look horrendous? I mean, just look at that. Price action looks looks horrendous. And then, of course, we know that price took off after that. That price action looked horrendous, took off. So, I mean, what do you, what do you want to know? What do you want me to say? Um, you know, I, I think Bitcoin's higher in six months, uh, but, you know, anything could happen. So that's why you have to manage your risk. Uh, and that's where I'm going to leave it. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like button. And I'll see you guys next week.